All right, everybody, welcome back into Sports and Money. I am Ben Parker. The offseason is here, so for all you Kansas City fans, we have a bunch of stuff to get to all through the offseason. Tonight, though, is not a strategy session. It's not a planning session. It's not an advice session. It is a wish list. So in the spirit of the offseason and just getting to think about things that might could possibly happen, I've got a whole bunch of wishes here stacked up that if I were a Kansas City Chiefs fan, I would be hoping for. So let's get started with it. Number one, I wish I had the best quarterback in the NFL. Oh, wait, you've already got that. We don't need that. Number two, I wish I had the best coach in the NFL. Once again, you basically already got that with Andy Reid. Number three, I wish I had the best tight end of football. Oh, no, wait, don't need that one either. Point is, you're already off to a great start in the offseason or any offseason when you have Patrick Mahomes at quarterback, Andy Reid at coach, and Travis Kelsey coming back at tight end. You already have a great start to the offseason. So it's going to be a really good offseason for Kansas City no matter what. Let's get to some serious stuff. Number four, Legereus Sneed. I wish the Kansas City Chiefs, and I think they're going to try to, Sneed is one of those guys, and you don't get to see a lot of this, but Sneed is one of those guys who the Kansas City Chiefs drafted, and he was pretty effective right from the start, but you got to watch him continue to develop and grow every single season and make more of an impact. And the impact he made on the defense this year was phenomenal. We already knew that he could tackle, tackle out in the flats, that he could cover, but he continued to show himself as more of a playmaker and more of an athlete this year than we've even seen in previous years. So he's young enough. He's making enough of an impact. Kansas City can work out the finances if they want to. I wish the Kansas City Chiefs would re-sign Legereus Snead. Number five, Chris Jones. This one is a little bit up in the air because Kansas City does not necessarily like to bring back guys that are sitting in that 29-year-old to 30-year-old category. Now, Chris Jones, once the season starts, will actually be 30 years old. So we'll see if Kansas City, how hard they actually try. I know Chris wants to. He's got a big heart. He had a big season. I think something can be worked out there, but we'll see if it actually happens. But I would love to see Chris Jones back there playing defensive tackle and an occasional defensive end for the Kansas City Chiefs next year. Number six, draft a wide receiver. Listen, I made a statement on this video two or three years ago that you could almost pull people out of the stands in Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes would find a way to get them to football. Tongue in cheek, but you kind of sort of did that this past offseason, this past year. You had a wide receiving core that really wasn't one of the best in the NFL. It was kind of on the other end of the best in the NFL, and everybody knows it. And yet you still won your second Super Bowl in a row, and Patrick Mahomes still had a good season, and you still found a way to work your way through the playoffs and have just a tremendous season. Uh, you really can't do any better, right? So, but... You don't want to keep doing that. It was obvious that Mahomes was limited in what he could do and what he wanted to do. So you really don't want to keep doing that year in and year out. And I realized that that was the perfect way to go about last season because the defense was phenomenal and you had the running game and Mahomes has really savvied up over the years in terms of being able to just work with whatever he's got. He doesn't have to beat you with bombs and speed anymore. He can work work it downfield just the way Tom Brady used to do when he was in kind of the second part of his career. But you don't want to kind of keep pushing that envelope every season. So I would love to see them, number six, draft a wide receiver. There's a number of good options. I don't think, because it's not in Kansas City's DNA, I don't think they're going to get Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze out of Washington. Love all three guys. They're all going to go top ten. I don't see Kansas City trading all the way up, although I would love to see them get aggressive and do that and just have that guy sitting there for Mahomes to get the ball to. But in the late, in the late first round there where you're drafting, you've got Brian Thomas out of uh, LSU. You've got Keon Coleman. I really, really, really like him there in Kansas City. I've already mentioned him. And Troy Franklin is the guy who could possibly out of Oregon. The speed and size seems to be there. I like him coming out of Oregon. But even down at, say, number 64, where you're picking down there. There's a guy named Xavier Leggett out of White, out of South Carolina. I encourage you to check him out. Love the explosiveness mixed with the size there. Um, Jalen Polk out of Washington. And Roman Wilson is an explosive guy out of Michigan that I would love to see work out there. 
in Kansas City. But even farther down in the third and fourth rounds, there's a guy named Johnny Wilson who's very tall and a pretty good slot receiver in more of a tight end mold kind of a guy. Coming out of Florida State, I would love him. Jacob Cowan, who's kind of a playmaker out of Arizona. You can catch him probably in the fourth round. There's a guy, another guy named Aeneas Smith, who's an, another explosive playmaker out of Texas A&M. There are wide receivers starting right in the top 10 of the draft all the way down through really the fifth rounds here that I like, and I haven't even mentioned all of them. So you can definitely go out there and get a wide receiver to help bolster this core. Number seven, draft another wide receiver. I don't know if Kansas City is going to do this or not, but I would love to see it. Listen, if we've all seen what Patrick Mahomes can do when you give him a lot of toys to play with, he is the best in the business, absolutely. Now listen, I know you won a Super Bowl last year with a receiving core that basically featured Rasheed Rice and, and Travis Kelsey, and that's fine, and maybe you can do it again. But I just don't want to limit ourselves that way. I really would like for us to see the full potential, use the full field, both vertically and horizontally, and really allow Patrick Mahomes to be the absolute best he can be, which is really nothing short of MVP level every week. And he just wasn't able to do that this past year. So I would love to see them kind of give him the tools, the toys, the whatever you want to call it, the weapons to be able to do that next year. So I would actually be looking for two wide receivers in the draft. Number eight, this is a hard one, but I would love to see them get a permanent left tackle. Um, and Donovan Smith, you know, he was he was working out last year. He was trying, but obviously they need something more permanent there. Now, again, you're not going to have every position fixed. You're not going to have every position locked down with somebody who's just amazing. But I would love to see them somehow, whether it's going through free agency or take a look in the draft and see what's sitting there. I would love to see them somehow fix up something permanent there at left tackle even if it's not something amazing. They haven't ever had an amazing left tackle in Kansas City during this current Super Bowl run that they're on. So it's not something that they can't play without. They are very good at scheming. They know how to work around any deficit at any position. They know how to do it. But still, on my wish list, I'd love to see them get it. Number nine, the Raiders. I hope the Raiders are bad. I hope Antonio Pierce can't find a quarterback because he's already talking about ways to beat us twice a year. So I wish the Raiders are bad. Number 10, I wish the Chargers are bad. Jim Harbaugh's coming in. There's a lot of hype. He's got a quarterback. He's got some decisions to make, but he should be a good team. But let the Chargers be bad. Number 11, let the Broncos be bad. This one's not a stretch at all. Sean Payton is still a good coach, but Russell Wilson may or may not even be the quarterback. And if he's not, I don't know who is there in Denver. So this may not be a stretch. So let Denver be bad too, so we can have an easier shot at the playoffs. You know what? Never mind. Let them all be good. We'll beat them in the playoffs anyway. It's Kansas City. It's what we do. We enter every week with the advantage at coach and at quarterback. So just never mind. Let all three teams be good and we'll beat them in the playoffs. All right, we got stuff coming up. Hope you enjoy it all through the off season. We've got a new show coming up here in mid-March called Sands of Time, where we're gonna be doing all kinds of cool things. Check out the Odds on Favorite podcast over on Spotify and YouTube. That's it, have a great one, goodbye.